In this lecture, we'll see a C program to check whether the number is positive, negative, or zero. As we can see here, we have got three conditions. The first condition is if the number is positive. Second condition is if the number is negative. And the third condition is if the number is zero. As there are more than two conditions, we will implement else if clause in the logic of this program. In one of my previous lectures, I have already covered the concept of else if clause. The link of that video is provided in the description box. Let's start with the program. So here I'm starting my program with a comment. C program to check whether the number is positive, negative or zero. Then comes a preprocessor directive, hash include, using which I'm including standard input output header file. Here is a main function with return type void. Inside the main function, I'm declaring an integer variable NO, that is for number. By making use of printf function, I'm telling the user to enter a number. Here, by making use of scanf function, I'm accepting the value of the number. And here comes the logic of this program. Let's try to understand the logic. As we can see here, we have got three conditions. We are dividing these three conditions as follows. So we're starting with the if statement in which we are providing the first condition if number is less than zero. So when this condition will be true, the message entered number is negative will be printed for the user. Then here we have got else if statement with which we are putting the second condition. That is if number is greater than zero. So if this condition will be true, the message entered number is positive will be printed for the user. And then we have the last condition that will automatically come inside else. So when none of these conditions will be true, the message entered number is zero will be printed. After completing the program, we have to save it. I've already saved this program with the name zero positive negative dot C denote that it's a C program file. After saving the program, we can go to execute and compile the code first. We can see here this code has zero errors, zero warnings. We can go back to execute and run the program. So it is asking me to enter a number. Let's say the number is six. And we can see the message entered number is positive. Let's see the flow of execution. So after accepting the number, it will check if six is less than zero or not. As six is not less than zero, it will come down to else if, and it will check if six is greater than zero or not. As this condition is true, the message entered number is positive will be printed. As the condition is true here, the else statement will never get executed. Let's try out another scenario. So I'll go back to execute and run the program. This time I'll enter minus nine. And we can see a message, entered number is negative. Let's see the flow of execution. For number minus nine, it will check if minus nine is less than zero or not. As this condition is true, the message entered number is negative will be printed. As the condition is true here itself, it will not execute else if and else statement, which improves the speed of execution of this program. And that's why it's always beneficial to make use of else if statements instead of multiple if statements, where every if statement will be compulsorily executed which will reduce the speed of execution. Let's try out the last scenario. So this time I'll provide the number zero and we can see the output entered number is zero. Let's try to understand the flow of execution. So first of all, it will check if zero is less than zero or not. As this condition is false, it will come down to else if statement and it will check if zero is greater than zero or not. As even this condition is false, it will come down to else and the printf statement inside else will be executed where the message entered number is zero will be printed. That's what we can see here. 
So in this example, we have learned how to make use of else if clause for more than two conditions. In the next lecture, we'll learn about complex decision making using else if clause. If you enjoyed this content, please like and share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, P for Programming. Thank you.